Okay, well, bless our teachers, those that are keeping. And I want to say we are opening up for volunteers, so we need some volunteers. We're looking at this next year. We're looking at budgeting, and we're looking at things, the real world, uh, you know, the, the, the finances and things that's took a toll on a lot of things. But uh, God is still our provider, is he not? But uh, we do need some volunteers. They may want to help volunteer do some cleaning. We're going to do some volunteering like every other week with volunteers. If you want to help with that, we could use it. Uh, volunteering in the nursery. Uh, helping us with our kids doing those things so there's opportunities and there's a lot of other things that you could volunteer for and we're going to be having some trainers if you want to be an usher a greeter uh, there's so many opportunities we're starting a new year and and the pie with the pastor one thing we talk about is what is it you have in you that you want to share with the family how can you put your gifts to use and how can God take your life and 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 take what he's given you and 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 give seed to the sower we're going to talk about seed to the sower and the more he gives you and you give it he's going to give you more how many of y'all know you cannot outgive God in any way, shape, or form? And so uh, this morning, I really believe that um, the Lord has just given me a perspective. And I, the, to go in the subjects I'm going to go into here, um, I'm just going to scratch the surface, right? I'm going to scratch the surface. Hopefully, I can give you enough uh, to whet your appetite that you'll say, I'm going to go seek more on that. How many of y'all know that's what we need to do? We need more, Right? And it's not all about what just the preacher can give you. And that's okay when you're a baby that they've kept, you know, people give you milk and they give you a bottle. But at some point, you start learning how to have some meat. You, need, you learn how to go in and fix yourself a sandwich. You, need to, you not only fix your own sandwich, but you fix your siblings a sandwich. How many of y'all know what I'm talking about? There's a growing process that happens. Are y'all ready to grow up? Everybody tell you just grow up. That's, that, that's like. That's insulting. Well, I'm not going to tell you to grow up today, but I tell you what, I want us to grow uh, ex exponentially in many ways in our life. How many of y'all really want your family to, to grow in many ways? You want your finances to grow? You want your energy? How many of y'all need more energy? I mean, aren't you wore out? You just wore out. Uh, how many of y'all need some more time? You just feel like there's not enough time. I can't even believe we started another year. I don't even know. Now it's like 2021 and 22 are all one to me. It's like that span. I don't even know what happened. Amen. But anyway, uh, Brother Joshua brought, taught. Did I just? Oh, there. I scared. I thought I left my. I thought, but yeah, this is going to be a short message. We got two little scriptures here. Y'all y'all, almost got out soon, but no, too bad. Um, <laughs> I'm, I've got to continue. We're going to continue. We know this whole year we're not going to get away from Psalms 23. I already know that. Uh, there's so much in Psalms 23 that you, you can't never get to the bottom of it. And what's interesting about it, I would say along with the Lord's Prayer, wouldn't you say that's the most memorized passages in the Bible? You may have a scripture, but when it comes to a passage, a long scripture, how many of y'all can literally right here quote most of Psalm 23? The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. How many times you go to funerals and they read it? It's on the back of the little brochure at the funerals. It's, it's very common. And the reason it's common across the board is because it's, it's full of, of wisdom and revelation about who he is. About who God is to us. Why, why do they put that out at funerals? Why do they put that out at times, those kind of some of the times we sung about there, this Psalms 23. And so as I, I look back at that, I realize something where he started in this. And I'm not going to even need to even attempt to go back and do what Brother Joshua did last week because he's already laid that foundation. But the first line says, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. And what I realized right there, before he ever got down to God being your protector, God being your vindicator, God being all these things as a shepherd, he said, the first thing I'm going to talk to you about is God is my provider. Amen. Right off the bat. I shall not want. He's my provider. How many of y'all in the house can say God has been your provider? And what does that mean to you? When you hear provider, what's, does somebody say, what is something that you say he's been a provider for you? He knows what we need. What's something he's provided for you? Just say something. Okay, yes. Healing. Mental health. Serenity. Y'all jumping right over the most obvious. You're trying to be all spiritual. But how about the fact he makes, helps you pay your bills? Let's just say what really. The first thing I think about, maybe y'all more spiritual to me, but when I heard it, God's my father, I thought, thank you, Lord, I have some money in the bank. I was just able to pay that, that huge gas, that electricity bill. <laughs> How can, I, I'm glad I got some food to eat. I enjoy being able to go out and eat because you better have some money if you're going out and eating today. 
You better have some money if you can go buy eggs today. I mean, is this not crazy? We, we living through some crazy times. You hear, you're in here, Roman, but we've already been through some stuff that our ancestors didn't see. I'm telling you something, God is my provider, but many times we think of the physical first because that's okay because that's we're human. That's why uh, Solomon said man, money answers all things. We would had to have some money, right, to buy the food, to, to do whatever it is we need to do. So God provides in the natural, but also, as you have already said, it's not just about that. How many of y'all know that? Oh, we, we need more than we need our bills paid. And there's a time to learn that we trust him through those lean times. And y'all have heard me say it. There's a time to go through those things. Paul, so Paul said, I learned how to, when I was poor, I didn't have any food, I was hungry. And how I, when I was filled, I had to learn some stuff. And Gary and I walked through those years. And one of the best ways he ever taught us to, to, to trust him was when we were first trying to pray about a house, trying to find a rent house we could afford before we got married. And then how to make that car payment. And y'all have heard those stories that we walked through and having $20 a week to buy groceries on. I would take anything for those times because it's in those times I learned to walk with him and I learned that he was faithful to provide for me. But I'm so glad he didn't leave me there. It wasn't just about the stuff. How many of y'all know it's not just about the stuff? Because you can walk through that and all of a sudden you could be abundant. How many of y'all know people right now the lottery's been in the deal? You know, somebody won that $1.3 billion. I mean, I'm like, but y'all know they talk about the curse of the lottery. Most people, they win, they can win $5 million, and five years later, they're in debt $5 million. They got the money, but you know what they didn't have? They didn't have some principles. They didn't have some things. They didn't really know what to do with it because their mind hadn't been changed. There hadn't been some things to know how to deal with the physical. Uh, and there's people that are blessed today. There's people, and y'all have heard this, that own size skyscrapers that are jumping out of the windows. They have all the money, but they don't have the peace. They don't have, they have the stuff, but they don't have the other stuff. They don't have what Apostle Paul said, I would that you prosper even as your soul prospers. What's your soul? Your mind. Your emotions. You can have the money, but if you're not prospering in your mind, it don't even matter how much you got when she left you and you ain't got nobody to take out to eat. It doesn't even matter how many of y'all know there's, there's torment in here that God wants to be our provider for more just the, the physical. He wants to provide for us. He wants to be uh, our provider in other ways. Um, I said, how many of y'all glad that he, not only he gives us, that helps us with food and shelter, transportation, and how to pay the bills, but he also is a God that gives us peace that passes understanding. I, I'm watching that sunrise this morning, and I'm thinking, how the hell we made it? How we got through that? We didn't know how we were going to, we didn't know how Lindsay's kids were fair. We didn't know it was a what ifs, what ifs, but I'm telling you what, I'm so glad even through it all and even today because it don't end. How many of you know it gets better and changes, but God starts doing something inside of us that all of a sudden now what was my pain becomes my power, and now we're out helping other people in the neighborhood. All of a sudden, we're taking those things and we're turning it and we're seeing it at peace. But also, how many know he, gives a, he provides our direction? He provides a, a wisdom. He provides counsel. And in the spiritual, he provides forgiveness. Aren't we glad for that? He provides that salvation. He's continuing to save us, deliver us again and again. I had to run to the Father again and again and again. These are provision. He started off, David said, I shall not want. Not only in the physical, but in the spiritual and in the psychological or the, the mental state that somebody said mental health. There you make it. It's mental health. These are things God wants to provide for us. But I started thinking about this. Okay, let's just start with the natural. Let's talk about how he provides. Well, he's not just raining manna down from heaven anymore, is he? How did he provide for that money for your electricity bill? How'd you get that money? He just fall out of heaven? It's a we thing. How did you say that, brother? You said something about the we last week, brother. The key is the we. Yeah, the we key. I thought that was funny. Almost like we be, but we key. I got it. You see, there was always something for us to do in this. It's always been a we thing. But I think about the time when we said, does manna fall from heaven? There was a time it did. Y'all know when the Israelites came out of, out of Egypt, out of bondage, what did he do with them? He didn't say, just stop right here now. Let's plant a garden. Let's start growing some things. Let's, let's harvest some wheat. Let's make some bread. He said, no, I've got you covered right now. You just came out of this. How many of y'all know when you just get saved, you come out of the world, he is just, he's just right there. He's just right there. You're not really having to do much to just follow him. Oh, he provides a light by a night. He provided a, a fire by night and a, a, a cloud by day. He led them. He provided their shoes didn't wear out, the clothes didn't wear out, and they had manna every day from heaven. And when they couldn't find the river, he put water just jump out, come out of a rock. 
It didn't jump out. It flowed out of the rock. God was their provider. But there was a time for that. But there was another time. He says, now we're going to grow into another level. How many of y'all ready to go to another level? How many of y'all just tired of getting the place just barely getting by? And I got my provisions met. I had some food today. Thank you, Jesus was able to get enough gas to come to church. Some of you ain't there yet, but that's okay. He's not going to stay there very long because he's going to bring you, when you learn what he's given me, the principles, the principles of the promise, the principles of provision. There's some principles behind provision. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Let me tell you something. It just don't happen. There's some principles that you follow. How many of y'all heard us saying the plan works if you work the plan? We used to use that in sales. I used to tell my girls, plan works. If you don't work that plan, you ain't going to do nothing. I hear AA say the same thing in that recovery. It works if you work it, right? It works. So, so there's some things I'm going to tell you. It's a principle of the universe. And what I'm going to give you today is some principles that can change your life. And there may be, it is, I'm not teaching this because you're not doing it. I'm teaching it because you need to know, you might see know what you've been doing right. How many of y'all know? Some of we just need to know what we've been doing right. I learned some principles here a few years ago on what we call first fruits. He started revealing some things about me, these principles of provision, how he provides and how uh, these things. And I, I, I remember I was making my bed one day, and, and, I, and I had the, we had a TV in the bedroom at that time, and, and my case was up there talking on the TV, and he was talking about the principles of first fruits. And he was talking about these things, and I just stopped. And I listened. I'm like, whoa, I never heard that part before. We never talked about that. We just, I never really heard that much about that. And, boy, it grabbed my attention. And I was like, i got to hear more. So I ordered a book. Today, I hope I give you enough that you want more, that you're going to seek more. How many of y'all want more? You know what? You give a child a fish. What's the old saying? Give a child a fish, you feed him for a day. Teach him to fish, and you feed him for a lifetime. I'm hoping today I'm going to teach you some principles that you can know how to fish for yourself and not only have fish for you, but fish for somebody else. Y'all know what I'm talking about? It's fixing to be spring. You're going to get to fish again. Look at that boat out. Well, all of a sudden here, these people have been wandering around the wilderness and they, they was, they was, he was providing for them. He's making it. It's like making it on the job. You know, some, you get where you just, is that what we work? We just work to pay bills? It's, it becomes a rat race, right? They were in a 40-year rat race. But he was like, right over there is a promised land. And over there, you're not going to have to do this. But I, I'm not, and the man is going to stop when you walk over there. But now you're going to have your own stuff. Now you're going to have vineyards that you didn't even plant. You're going to have wells. You're going to have wells. You're going to have now something that's yours. Now it's called wealth. It was provision, and they provided for him, but now you're going to end up in the wealth. Now you're going to end up where there's milk and honey flowing. There's all these things where it's not just going to take care of you and feed you today, but you said you're going to leave an inheritance not just for your children, but your children's children. Somebody said, don't let your kids just go sell grandma's house. They worked hard years to buy that old farmland out there so the family would always have a home. But kids today, oh, we're just going to sell it because we can get a big. They don't understand the value. How many know people just selling things of value because they didn't know what it took to get it? The Lord wants you to know some principles today of how you get this and how you keep this and how you have something for your babies and your grandbabies. How many of y'all ready for that? Am I talking to some mature people today? I'm talking to you. I'm not talking to people that just, just just born yesterday. I've got some people, you may be new, you may just got baptized, but I promise you, you've been on this journey for a while. Can you say amen? amen. Oh, who is it? I baptized you last week, but eight, eight years old. You committed your life to God, got baptized. Now you're a man. You said, I, got, I need to grow some. I need to do something now as a man. How many of y'all know it's time you become a man, you put away childish thinking? Let me tell you what's childish. People that live in poverty, you know what they have a mentality of? And I'm not talk, really speaking about money today, but I've got to throw this out. I saw somebody talking about finances on, on, on uh, TV the other day. But he said, you know, the, the poor have a mentality of spending. It's all about spending. What they get, they spend it. How many of y'all know the more you make, the more you spend? Anybody but us do that. It's so easy. You get a raise, and what do you do? They say they get a raise. They don't raise their, their uh, level of giving. They, they raise their level of spending. But he said, wealthy people have a mentality, not spending, but wealthy have a mentality of investing. There's a difference in mentality. 
They learn something that there's a value investing. There's a value investing. The Bible talks about it said, lay not or invest not your treasures in earth and things all the time because they did just go away. The moth and the robbers. How many of y'all know you buy your kids stuff and then they go, well, what happened to that? Or that vacation and it's like a memory. There's so many things that we just spend and spend. He said it's like putting money in a hole in a bag, a bag with a hole in it. You know, I don't know what happened to it. I, but you got to be real careful. I'm going to give you a principle today. I was thinking about yesterday, my, my niece had a garage sale. And I went over there, and we're laughing, going, I remember we bought, I remember we bought that. And that was like, man, we drove to get that. And she's got it up there at, at, for a dollar. You know, Brother Green said, uh, what will you charge me to put that in your truck? <laughs> How many of at the end of a garage sale, you're asking people, can I put that in your truck? <laughs> I don't want that back in the garage. He said, but we, but we valued that. We spent money on that. We laughed about it. I was like, you remember we bought that? She's like, what was I thinking? Now I'm trying to get somebody to take it. It's so easy, but we just start spending. We got a mentality that God's trying to say, I want to give you some principles uh, to be able to prosper as your soul prospers. The soul prospers got to work first, but I've got to get your mind right. If you don't get your mind right, your mind and will don't get right, I don't care if you win the lottery. You're never, it's never going to give you what you really, 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 really want. But he said he showed me, I, I started thinking about that. There's some principles that you've got to learn that goes along with the provision. Okay, we're not walking around. At first, they were walking around, he's giving them money. But at some point, he said, I need you to grow, and I'm trying to get you a different place. And so they had been in the wilderness for a while, and Moses went up the mountain, and he told him, he said, I want you to come up here, mountain, come up to this mountain, Moses, and I'm going to show you a pattern. I'm going to show you some ways I need you to do stuff. And he said, he showed him in the heavenlies the tabernacle, and he said, I need you to go down here, Now I want you to build something physical on earth. Right? I need you. How many of y'all know there's this physical thing that people need to have? We need to have money for our bills, right? We need to have physical health. It's very hard to enjoy anything. People with billions of dollars that, that, are, that are dying with, with all kinds of things. We look and see, uh, it, it just grieves me, little um, uh, the Bresley girl, uh, Elvis's daughter that just died. Lisa Marie, Elvis's daughter, said she had millions of dollars, but she was, they said just later, she was, I forget how many millions in debt, even though she, she got, but you know what, it didn't matter if she was rich, famous, beautiful, all these things. I'm going to tell you something, there's some principles you've got to learn because she was dying of, of, of situations just like her daddy because there's something didn't happen in her mindset. Y'all know you got to get your soul prospering, and he's trying to show you some things. He goes, but I want to show you some things he made. He said, Moses, go build this tabernacle down here so people can do physical things to walk through, to learn the spiritual. I mean, I know he shows you physically to show you the spiritual. So I can't just jump over the physical things. This is how we learn. He showed him that. But let me tell you a scripture that I love this scripture, Psalms 103 and 7. And I believe this is what the Lord is bringing us to today. He said, Psalms 103, 7, said, he made known his ways to Moses. Say ways. I'm going to show you some ways, Moses. And he, where's that? His acts to the children of Israel. So the one that went up on the mountain, Moses, he said, he's going to show him his ways. But the people down here below, the children of Israel, they saw his actions. They saw the fire on the mountain. They saw the light and they saw the, but they, they saw the result, but they didn't understand the ways. How many of y'all know we can look and see and judge what's happening, but if you don't really know the motive behind it, you can misunderstand it. They were always confused with God. They was always blaming God. They was always gripping and complaining about God. It doesn't matter. He delivered them and did all these miracles. They're still gripping and complaining. How many of y'all know we can do that? He can pay the bills last week, and all of a sudden we're gripping and complaining. But they were complaining spirit. There was something in their heart. But he said he made known his ways to Moses and his acts to the children of Israel. I believe the Lord is trying to tell Christian gathered, anybody else listening to me right now, he's trying to let you know his ways this year. That's why he said, I'm, I'm going to reveal Psalms 23 to my church because I need you to know some ways about that. I don't want you to just see the actions and deal with that, but I need you to know my motive because I've got a motive behind what I'm doing in your life. There was a motive of letting Gary and I go through those lean years. And all of a sudden, we just didn't get the best job. And we were, he applied for the railroad for years. My daddy retired for the railroad. His brother retired for the railroad. But they just wasn't hiring Gary on the railroad. And it was weird. And But we kept on walking. And we walked through what it means to, to do the feast and famine of, of being a painter's life and having his own painting business. And we walked through those years of some stuff. Because let me tell you something. What I learned in that, he was showing us his ways. 
He was showing I'm going to be faithful to you. And if you'll just keep putting me first, honey, I will be faithful to you. And so what I learned when I was watching my case that day on that book, he's talking about the principle of first fruits. I said, oh, my gosh. He just what mate was just talking about what we've been doing all along. We just didn't know why we were doing it. We were doing stuff that was working. We had principles that we were working because I saw my mom and daddy work these principles. See, my mom and daddy knew about first fruits without ever even using the word. They knew what it means, and you said it in your prayer, Megan, to put God first. Oh, they understood that. They didn't understand all that other stuff, but they knew how to put God first. I tell you what, on the first day of the week, on Sunday morning, sitting where you are, so was I. Us kids went to church every Sunday morning unless there was just some reason. And if we are sick, that wasn't good enough because we was going to go to church and get prayed for by the elders. I could say, I'm sick. I'll, no, we're going to go get the elders pray for you. I learned about healing because of that. Oh, my, that seems ridiculous to say. I never even went to a doctor until I was 18 years old. And I went through a lot of stuff. God healed us kids. We called Brother Houghton and the elders of the church. We believed in James 5, 14. Call the elders. They'll pray for you anoint you with oil. We believed that. My mom and daddy taught that to us. And you know what? We walked it out because they showed us how to put God first and believe God is our provider and he is the healer. He's the healer of our children. He's a healer. I look back and see when my daughter Morgan was premature and they said we can't do anything. Their lungs were collapsing, collapsing, kept putting twos. We can't do anything for you, but just keep putting her in. And, and every time she claps, we're going to put something in there. And now they can do stuff, but they didn't have it back there. There wasn't nothing to do. We didn't know what was going to happen. They could not. The doctor said this happened to my son. It, it happened to President uh, uh, Kennedy. It had a, a child die with this. You know, the president, they couldn't even save him. But you know what, what? God was a provider. And I remember how he carried us through those times when I walked in that hospital that morning and waiting to go see my newborn baby. I had to leave up there in the NICU. You know I'm talking about how to leave you babies up there in the NIC unit. It's not fun to drive off and leave that newborn. And I met that doctor. She met me in the hallway and she looked at me and said, Miss Weeby. I said, oh my God. She goes, your baby has started healing herself overnight. I looked at her and said, my baby didn't heal herself. But I know a God that's a healer. My God healed my baby. How many you know he is your provider in many, many levels? But you learn it because you walk through some things. And I realized that Gary and I had always put God first. Not, I'm, not, I'm just going to tell you, it's just truth. It worked. The principles work when you work the principles. It doesn't matter how poor we was. I don't care what he was doing when I said those years when we were trying to figure out how to make the car payment. Know how to buy the groceries and do those things as a young couple. We never, ever not put God first in our money. We gave our tithes every week. I don't care if he made $100, $10 went in that basket first. There was no question about, do I have the money? It wasn't about having the money. It was about, this is, I'm, I, this is what he gave me. That's all you gave me, Lord, but I'm giving you thanks for $100. How many of y'all know this is about being thanksgiving? Oh, there's the first part. It's about the heart. Do you have a thankful, grateful heart? I hear the word grateful a lot in, uh, in recovery. People tell me I have a grateful heart. Be grateful. This was something he did to say, I need you to be grateful. And it ain't even something, a law that you have to do. It never was about uh, having to do anything. This all started with Abraham. Abraham, who he, 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 the Lord had blessed him. I can't go into all that story. But he paid tithes, he said, of all he had to Melchizedek. Not because he told him to or he had to or if you don't give it, you won't receive it or you're going to be cursed. None of that junk. All he said is, I am of grateful heart and I'm going to honor you because you helped me. And he did this unto the Lord. It was a principle of the heart. It's a principle. And it works if you work it. It's the principle's the process of provision, this is how he, I shall not want. He made known his ways. I want to just make you some, note him some ways today that you might not have dawned on you. You've probably been doing it, but you might not have known why it worked. Why it worked. Uh, this, I, was talking to, I was talking to Brother Hayes this week, and, and we need to pray for him. He's, he's just been going through kidney stones. and I mean, they, they've had a, a couple of years of just, I can't even tell you what they've gone through. They're, they're not here in church on Sunday mornings, but it's just been amazing. We were talking about money. He's over our budget and stuff like that. And, and we're looking at places we could cut, you know, some things. And, and he goes, well, you know, we have all these things right here we give. And, and some of y'all don't even know what this church does. You don't know what happens. But our church... It, more than gives more than a tithe of what comes in here to other people. We give to the Uganda, the orphanage in Uganda, every month. 
We give to the food bank in Gainesville Living Word every month. We give to Restored Hope down in Dallas, which is a recovery house for women coming out of sex trafficking. Every month goes into that. We go into... Um, I can't list all of them. I can't think. But this church gives out. I mean, we give out because, and, and we were, somebody reminded me, we didn't know that where that was going. You need to know what's happening. And, and, and I was talking to somebody this week. They said, are we going to be a reservoir or are we going to be a river? Are we just going to get, get, get? Are we going to be a river? I get it and I let it go out of me. How many y'all know he will bring seed to the sower? If you will get, he will get, bring it to you if he can bring it through you. This church is going to be a given church. I said, that we can't cut that. That will not be cut. He said, I'm so glad to hear you say that, Pastor. That's the kind of pastor I want. I want a church that's a river, a church that's not just concerned about me. The more you bless this church, the more we're going to give. We're not going to increase our spending. We're going to increase our giving because that's a principle of the kingdom. The more I get, he goes, he's going to make known his ways unto you. So this is one of the things that this message jumped out at me, a word. I'm going to read this right here. Uh, well, I'm going to first start with this one. Isaiah 55 and 7, 7 through 12. He said, let the wicked forsake his ways. And I looked up that word wicked right there this morning. It says the, the morally wrong. We think wicked like they're out killing and raping people. No, he just says they're, they're, they're morally. They're not living morally a life. And it says to forsake his way. Let the wicked, uh, let the morally wrong re- forsake his way. And that word forsake means relinquish. Just give it up. How many of y'all need to relinquish some things? You need to relinquish some, some stinking thinking. You need to, to, to do some things. He said, just let him relinquish. Forsake his ways. Whose ways? Our way. Let your way go. And the unrighteous man forsake his thoughts. Let it go. Let him return again to the Lord, and the Lord will have mercy on him. And to our God, for he will abundantly pardon. I love that word abundant. How many of y'all want abundant here? I want abundant peace. I want abundant uh, in every level, body, soul, spirit. He said he will abundantly, abundantly. I love that word. For my thoughts are not your thoughts. Mm -mm 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 -mm. The thoughts is what I was taught, what I grew up around, my experiences. Aren't you know that the rest of this journey with the Lord is to get renewing of my mind. I got to get rid of some old thinking, how many of y'all know, and go into some new. I'm going to give you principles today. If you grab this, it'll change your life and your children and your children's children. Let them uh, forsake his thought. Okay. Um, for my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are my ways your ways. He made his ways known to children, to Moses. He said, so my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are my ways your ways, saith the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways. And my thoughts are higher than your thoughts. You need to learn him some ways today. Ways to handle relationships, your life, all the different things he's trying to teach you this year. If you'll hang around, you're going to learn some ways that will change your life. And he goes on down here and he says, um, For the rain comes down, the snow from heaven returns not thither, but waters the earth, and brings forth bud that it may give seed to the sower. Y'all say seed to the sower. He has a way. He's always had a way. He's going to give you the seed so you can go out and sow some more and get some more seed. What did he tell tell, uh, Adam and Eve in the garden? Be fruitful and multiply. He said he made everything replica after its seed. Every tree after its seed, every animal after its seed, humans after the seed. That's the seed. That's his plan. He says, but I've got this thing. I've got a plan. I'm letting the the water come down and the snow come down. He goes, but um, I will give seed to the sower and bread to the eater. So shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth. It shall not return to me void, but it will accomplish what I please. How many of you know he's accomplishing some stuff in us? But you've got to get the principle. It accomplished what, it, uh, what I please. It shall prosper in the thing where I sent it. And you shall go forth, you'll go out with joy. Ooh, how many of y'all want this to be 2023? I'll go out with joy and be led forth with peace. Peace. Is there people in your family that need to know how to be led by steel waters, by some green pastures? Some of that Psalms 23 stuff, right here it is. You go forth with joy, be led with peace, and the mountains and the hills shall break forth before you into singing, and the trees of the field shall clap their hands. Is that not a wonderful, beautiful words? You see nature. You see nature. You see, God in nature, he said, I've got a plan here to give seed to the sowers. Somebody's going to sow. He didn't just drop it down. He goes, no, Adam, you tend the garden. 
you, y'all go. And y'all know it, when, when he was in there, that the garden, everything was given to him already to start with. Everything was given to him. He didn't have to plant those trees. He didn't have to dig that river. They were just there. Water, everything's there. But when he left, what did he say? Now because you want to do things your way, Adam, you want to know good from evil, now you're going to have to go work by the sweat of your brow. Texan men know that, what it's like to be out in the heat of the sweat. You can thank Adam for that. Now you're going to go out here and you're going to have to work for your food. Now there's a different level that he's bringing us now. But, but now aren't we glad that Jesus come along and come in and said, I'm going to undo what Adam did. Now I'm going to bring you into the spiritual. I'm going to bring you some spiritual. And we're going to get to that. But right here he says, I have a plan to give seed to the sower. And, and so I'm going to read this one here because this is, this is so, uh, it's very, y'all know these scriptures. 2 Corinthians 9, 6 through 12. It says the principle. He just said, I've got some principles. The water comes down. It's there. He's going to do all these things. I've got a purpose, and it's going to come down. It's going to do whatever I said it's going to do. If you will be a sower of seed, I'm going to bless it. So here we are in 2 Corinthians. He said, this is what I say to you, Paul teaching. He says, he that sows sparingly will reap sparingly. Well, this ain't, this is, everybody knows that. You just give a little, you know, you go out there and you sow one acre. You don't expect to go get five acres. My neighbor got five acres. Man, Bunny, I'm like, well, okay. How many did they plant? They planted five. How many did you plant? I planted one, but I want what they got. He that sows sparingly will reap sparingly. He that sows bountifully shall reap also bountifully. How many of y'all want to reap bountifully? Every man according as he purposes in his heart. That's what I want to talk about. What do you purpose in your heart? Where's your heart? Have you, have you purposed to just spare, just do it, to get by? I'm going to sow sparingly. Are you purposed? I'm going to sow bountifully. He that purpose in his heart, so let him give, not grudgingly. Now, quit just thinking about money here. Money is, in, but that's, this is more than money. Y'all got to get this. This is body, soul, spirit. This is about getting more time. It's about getting more, we talk about time, um, Talent and treasure. Time. How many of y'all? I said, we need more time, don't we? Rob, our time is robbed. We need more energy to use what we want to do, our gifts, and do our ministry. And we also need to be able to have more money. We need to have these things to do what I need to do. We don't have to worry about all that. But he says, he said, don't give grudgingly. Like, well, I have to. If I don't do it, I'm going to be cursed of God. i got to give this. I'm, keep your money. Just keep it. Or of necessity. Oh, people got off on that. If I don't give, God won't bless me. That's not the way it works here. And I, we're going to go back to that. Oh, I just want, I have to do it. If I'm necessary, I won't have anything. No. No, here's, it's not about the heart of that. I have to do it. For God loves a cheerful giver. God is able, finish this out. And God is able to make all grace abound toward you. Say all grace. Abound. Toward you that you always having, always having all sufficiency. I like that. Always having all sufficiency in all things. How many alls can you get in one sentence? May abound. How many abounding? Uh, to every good work. For it's written, he has dispersed abroad. He had given to the poor and his righteousness remaining forever. He said, I'm looking to see what you're dispersing with what I've given you. Have you taken the seed or are you just going to eat all your seed? Well, I got five acres worth of corn. We're going to have a fun. We're going to have some popcorn. We're going to do, we're just going to eat all of our seed. Some people, that was funny, wait a popcorn. Anyway, that just come out. But see, I understood some things about this reaping and sowing and gathering into the harvest. Gary used to work for a peanut farmer. And we were talking about this. He said when they gathered the harvest in, the first thing they did, they went and looked and they looked and see. They'd bring, because uh, he had a lot of different acres. They have different fields that they would plant these. And they, he was a big uh, farmer over, uh, over in Collinsville. And so they'd go test the field and say, look at these peanuts that came out of this field. And then, so this field over here, just the peanuts might just have one nut in them. Y'all know the little bitty peanuts? I one. And some of them had two nuts. And how many of y'all had those three nuts? Y'all know what I'm talking about, them big old long ones. You can get them out, you know. I used to eat those over at the steak, well, that steak restaurant. You could eat them and throw them the holes on the floor. Something about that, throwing them on the floor, just kind of fun because I didn't have to sweep them up. 
Texas Roadhouse. I'm not make y'all hungry. Y'all want to run out here because I ain't through yet. But the truth is, he said, we would look and see which field was the most abundant field. Which field made the three peanuts? Because that's where we're going to take our seed from. We're going to take that in first. Before we eat it, before we sell it, before we do anything, we're going to go look and see that. And we're going to gather it in the storehouse and put it over here and say, we ain't touching that. Because next year, we're going to use the abundance and we're going to bless and we're going to have more next year. It's called a principle of prosperity. It's the principle of God's being your provider. They took it in first. This is just natural stuff. Because they knew they, they didn't going to eat all of it. You eat it all, you ain't got nothing for next time. Tell people, the more you give them, they're going to eat it all. Well, we're going to go to Six Flags now. Oh, we can go do this now. Why don't you just stop him and say, wait a minute. First of all, you say, I want to give back the first that he already gave me. We're fixing to do that. I'm getting ahead of myself. Let me just read this before we go any further. Ma Malachi. Ooh, I love me some Malachi. The last book in the Old Testament that's in the, this way. I don't know if it's chronologically right. I didn't look at that, Brother Leonard. But, uh, Malachi, he said, bring all, your, all the tithes, all the tithes in the storehouse, that, you may, that there may be meat in my house, and prove me now therewith, said the Lord of hosts. Host means of heaven. Y'all know there's a host of heaven right here in the house with us. The Lord of hosts who commands the angels on your behalf. He said, look here. He said, now this, let me go back. What is he talking about? Bring all the tithes in the storehouse. Now this is back under the law. And he's telling the children of Israel, now that you're out here, this is how I want you to provide for the house. Because now they have a tabernacle, right? They have all this stuff. They've got the, the showbread over here. And they've got the candlesticks over here. And they've got the altar of incense. And he says, I need you to bring the tithe, which was the first tenth, the tenth of what you've harvested. Whatever it is, your animals, your all these different things. And you bring it to the storehouse that you, there may be meat in my house. That improve me there within. And this is what I got from the Lord. He's like, just try me. He told those people, you just try me. Because I got a plan for that. Because there's going to be somebody in here that's going to take care of the house. So let me explain this. When they got over there, that they gave uh, there was 12 tribes, 12 sons. And they all got land except one. So they divided up all the land, and they got 11 of the brothers, those of the tribes of the Israel, they got their inheritance. And then they're going to work it for their kids. But the tribe of Levi, he said, no, you're going to be ministers in the house of God. You're going to work for the tabernacle, and you're not going to have any land. So how am I going to provide for you and your family? The, everybody there that's got the land, they're going to bring tithe of their land and bring it in the house, and that's how you live, right? Because you're not going to have any fields to go work. In fact, you're going to be in there stomping those olives to make that olive oil to go in those lamps that are never going to go out. You're going to spend your time making the bread. You're going to make your time killing all those animals and, and doing all those sacrifices. And so he said, i got a plan here to take care of my house. And your family's going to be taking care of Levi, but you're going to be working for the house of God, and everybody else is going to do theirs, but they're going to bring the first tithes in the house so you can be paid. Does that make sense? Well, that's kind of what we do today. When you bring your tithes in the house, who is in the house, the Bible says, that labor in the word and doctrine, the elders. And so they're worthy, he said, uh, of, of double honor. They're able. So you people have a, that don't work, uh, they, they, this is their full-time job. You know what I'm saying? So they live with the church. It's a principles back then. But that was just but then. I mean, it's still today we use this principle. So he had a plan, he says, but here's the big deal I'm trying to tell you. We're not under the law. We're not doing it that way, but here's the plan. It's still the plan. He said, just try me. You put me first. They were putting him first before the law. Abraham did it before the law because their heart. They was bringing back and being thankful and bringing that first fruits to the house and said, I remember what you did for me. But he says, Don't, just try me and see if I won't open the windows of heaven and pour out a blessing that there will not be room for you to receive it. And I'll, re mm, this is my favorite part, and I'll rebuke the devourer. I'll rebuke the devourer. That one that comes in there, that thief and the moth and all those things that just takes it from you. And you don't even know what happened to that money. You got a raise and you're still in debt. He said, but I will rebuke the devourer for your sake and he will not destroy the fruits of your ground. Neither shall your vine cast her fruit before a time and field, said the Lord of hosts. And all nations will call you blessed for you shall be a delightsome land. Oh, I like that word. Your family will have a delightful land. The people's going to look at you. He said, I need you to try me and prove me to see if my ways don't work. Because let me tell you something about first reason. i got to go back to this because I could preach on this all day. You know, no, that. We ain't, we're just touching on it. The Lord always blessed the first fruits. What did he say in the New Testament? He said, here's the kingdom. 
Seek first the kingdom of God. Say first. Before you do anything else, seek my kingdom, my righteousness first. Let my righteousness be true. Do that first. He said, if you'll do that, he said, all these other things will be added to you. He said, if you seek me first, all those things, that's where he's talking about the, the birds of the fowl there. They don't do it. I take care of the birds. I take care of the lilies. I take, he said, just try me. Are you not more worth more than that? He said, he goes, just try me and see what I will do for you. He said, because there's a principle of first fruits. You see it, it when they walked out of the garden, guys. It goes back to Genesis. Now, you can think what you want, but that's how I think about this. Cain and Abel came and was giving him a sacrifice. They were coming. There's nothing there. said, thou shalt sacrifice. Thou shalt give your tithes. Nope, none of that. Mm -mm. Right off the bat, they're giving offering to the Lord. The Bible says that Cain brought of his field. He just brought an offering and gave it to him. But it said Abel gave of the firstling of his flock. What's the big deal about giving the first of your flock? When you give the first, you're giving it by faith because you don't know if that, that cow's going to have any more. You don't know if there's anything else coming. It's I trust you first. He brought the first fruits. He brought the firstling of his flock. Some of us say it was because it was blood. It could be all that, but all I know is he brought the firstling. And let me show you this. When I went over to that promised land, guys, out of provision, I'm just going to provide for you. We're going to make you bills. But if you want to now come into the land of plenty, here's what I want you to do, the first thing you do. They got over there, and what's the first thing they ran into? What's the first city they came to? Jericho. Can you imagine seeing this beautiful city of Jericho right there and you've been for 40 years wearing the same pair of shoes? I can't even imagine. I can't even imagine having to wear the same shoes. for. I'm about ready to kick these off here in a minute. It's going to be all right. The same clothes, same food. They were ready. They were ready to party. They were ready like, woo, we go. God's going to give us this land. And there's the city of Jericho. He said, you just march around it. It's going to fall down. Like, woo, hallelujah, we're going to have it. We're going to have, we're going to have a great time. They say, wait, 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 wait. I got something I need to tell you, though, first, people. This first city's mine. You can't take nothing out of that city. The first city went across. He said, yep, I brought you out. Don't forget where I brought you out of Egypt when you were stomping straw at slaves. I've been providing for you for 40 years now, and I'm ready to give you more, but here's the first thing I need you to do. You need to learn the principle of first fruits. Quit your gripping, quit your worrying, quit looking back, and let's look ahead. He says, that first city is mine. Only thing you take out of that city is the gold to be brought into my tabernacle. He said, but the rest of you don't touch it. Did y'all know that's what he said? You had to burn the whole city. You can't take nothing. You give it back to me as a burnt sacrifice. You give it right back to me. And so what happened? Well, most of them did that, but there was a guy named Achan who just, he probably loved shoes. I don't know. And he loved the Babylonian garment because he went over there and took some stuff and hid it in his tent. He hid a Babylonian garment. He just wanted some new clothes. What's wrong with that? There's nothing wrong with that. He, he, he wanted some silver. He took some silver. He took some stuff and he hid it. But let me tell you what it did. Because he did not honor the first fruits and put God first and being thankful and obeying the Lord said, you put me first and see that I won't pour out a blessing on you. Because he did that, he went and hid it. He wanted to keep it for himself. And what happened? Not only ended up destroying him, his family, his kids, they were all destroyed, but also it hurt the church. It hurt the people of Israel. They lost their last battle because they didn't trust God. Oh, I'm telling you a principle right here. I'm telling you a principle that goes all the way back, way before the law. This ain't about the law, honey. This is about the heart. It's about a principle how this how God's going to prosper you. If you want him just to rain my manna down, you just want to bear to make it, bear to make it, that's all right. But I'm tired of eating manna. I'd like to have some, some, some of that uh, milk and honey and T-bone. There you go. Ooh, there, some T-bone. He said, you put me first. Okay, when you put him first, I remember the, the story of the, 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 the lepers. I mean, there's 10 lepers. There's a reason it was 10. The 10. And, and he healed them. He healed all the lepers Jesus did. But one of the lepers, only one, came back and said, oh, thank you. I'm coming back. They all go on their way. The tithe, the one, the first one come back and said, thank you. And the Bible said not only they were healed, but they were made whole. The rest of them just got healed of leprosy, but he got his limbs back and whatever had been eaten away. God made him whole. How many of y'all just ready? You don't just want to be alive, but you want to be whole. You want your babies to be raised by some whole people. 
Not having to continue to be hurt by your problems because you ain't learned the principles and you still continue never just quite making it because you're not understanding some principles. And this is not just about your money way beyond that. Honey, this is about your time. Where do you put your time first? Where do you put your talent first? Some people are like, well, I, I volunteer for the church. That's my, that's my money. Well, okay, you can be, you'll be blessed in your time, but you're not the blessing. If you're not giving of the money, there. You give it of your time, there. You're giving of your energy. When I start putting him first, say, thank you, Lord. I wouldn't even be here alive if it wasn't for you. I wouldn't even have a job if it wasn't for you. I wouldn't be able to sing if it wasn't for you. I wouldn't be able to be here to greet people if it wasn't for you. I wouldn't be able to do the ministry if it wasn't for you. And so they remember the first fruits because he said, I need you to do I want you to sow uh, abundantly so I can give you abundantly. He said, if you will do this, you bring these things in the storehouse that when I, he said, I, because I have a plan. And he said, you prove me. Just let me show you what I'll do. Just try me. I'll just go to the New Testament real fast. Acts 20 and 7. This is what you're doing today. This is why I say, I'm not telling you something. You may already be doing all this. And I guarantee you are in some ways, but you need to know why it works. Why it works. The apostles knew it works. He says in Acts 20 and 7, he said, upon the first day of the week, what day is that? Sunday. Sunday morning, the first day of the week, when the disciples came together to break bread. They did that. They didn't just wait to wait. No, the first day of the week. Oh, they put him first. First day of the week. Up until then, what did they honor the Lord on the Sabbath, which was Saturday, the rest day? But now when the New Testament happens, now what are they doing? They're doing the first day of the week. They're out here meeting together. Paul's preaching. It's funny because he said Paul preached and, uh, and it was ready to part, and he continued his speech till midnight. Y'all, y'all lucky. We're not going past midnight. We, we got, we're not going that long. But they came together on the first day of the week to break bread. That's what I'm doing right now. I'm breaking some bread. I've been cooking some bread and God's been, and I'm giving you something and you give it to one another. And I think they physically ate too. It matters physically. That was some, oh my gosh, that brisket yesterday. They saved me a piece. Oh my goodness, I'm so glad. Thank you, whoever did that. But on the first day of the week, and let me go here, 1 Corinthians 16, 1 and 2. He said, now, this is New Testament. This is how Paul teaching them. He said, concerning the collection for the saints, I have given order to the churches. Now, I don't think he was giving you an order. You better do this. No, let me tell you something. Do y'all know God is a God of order? He has an order. He has a plan. It's a principle that brings him to be your provider. It's the order. Paul said, I've given order to the churches of Galatia, and now I'm giving it to you. This is the order. On the first day of the week, there it is again, first day of the week. I already read you uh, in one place. Now, the first day of the week, let every one of you lay and store by him and store as God has prospered him that there be no gathering when I come. I've got to have house. I'm going to have meat in the house. I'm going to have money to pay people, to pay the bills. But not just that. I'm going to use that money, but it's all about blessing you because he says, as you have purposed in your heart, he said, lay in store. Have you purposed to give bountifully or sparingly? Are you purpose says, Lord, I'm going to trust you and I'm going to give you the first fruits of what I have. I'm going to give you the first tithe. And I, I don't care if I don't have the bills. That's what, that's what really confuses people about this first business. I've heard it over and over. I know what you're saying when you say, I, don't have, I can't afford to pay tithes. I can't give that. I don't have it. What does that mean? Did he not give you anything this week? Has he prospered you? And so what you do, you say, ah, we only made $100. And we got $500 worth of bills due. Well, I can't give that $100. Oh, let me tell you something. You're going to need a miracle for that $500 anyway. <laughs> you might as well try me and see if I want part of the blessing. I'm going to tell you a story that seems real weird. In the Old Testament, there was a widow woman. And the, the, the prophet, this is what was weird too. I noticed this. He told, the Lord told the prophet, he said, I don't you go down. This lady's going to take care of you. Go down there, she's going to take care of you. He's like, ooh, I'm going to go down to some rich lady's house. I think that woman's going to, how many good men looking for a good woman to take care of them? <laughs> well, anyway, I ain't going to go there. I said, man, he ain't got a job, but he's sure is handsome. Okay, you better run for the hills. Mm-mm, bad sign. Red flags all over the place. Okay, let's get back on it. Get back to preaching, Pam. He said, go down to that woman. She's going to take care of you. He goes down there, and he runs into this woman. She's out there in the ground picking up sticks. He's like, what you doing, lady? She goes, oh, I'm just going to fire. I just need two sticks to make a fire. Because right now, I've got a little bit of meal, and I've got a little bit of oil, and I'm fixing to make a, a cake for me and my son, and we're going to eat together. It's our last meal, and we're going to die. 
Do you imagine what the, what the pro- I thought right there, what that prophet thought, like, is that the right address, God? <laughs> Seriously? This is who's going to take care of me? When I've been on the run, I've been out here working for hard, and that's what you gave me? This is the people that's going to pay my, it's going to take care of me, pay our bills. I'm working for you, Lord, but this is what I get. Oh, I think I got this down. Y'all might need to look at that right there somewhere. I think I gave you that scripture. 1 Kings 17, 12 through 14. And she said, as the Lord Almighty God liveth, I have not a cake, but a handful of meal in a barrel and a little cruise, oil in a cruise. And behold, I'm gathering two sticks. I may go out and dress it for me and my son that we may eat and die. And Elijah said to her, fear not. Fear not. He probably had to get over his own fear too. Like, who's going to feed me? I just asked you for something. You ain't got nothing. He says, fear not, but go and do as you've said. Just go on about your business. Go get the sticks, build the fire, make the cake, but there's only a problem. You ain't going to get to eat it. You're going to give it to me. That sounds really, really selfish. Make a little cake first, 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 and bring it to me, and after that, make one for you and your son. Did you not just hear me? I only got enough for one. For thus saith the Lord God of Israel, the barrel of meal shall not waste, neither shall the cruise of oil fail until the day of the Lord sendeth rain upon the earth. Now, it seems really weird to say give to the Lord first when you ain't got enough for yourself. He said, you trust me. You put me first. You put that there first and see if I will not open the windows of heaven. And you bills that 500, you won't even know where that 500 came from. How many of y'all know what I'm talking about It's truth? You don't even know where it come from. You look back and say, because I obeyed the Lord and I trusted you. And I said, I don't care if I don't have the money to pay my bills. The first thing I'm going to do is come back and I'm going to be like the 10 lepers. I'm, I'm coming back to you and say, Lord, here it is. I'm giving the tithes in the storehouse. To whatever you want to do with it. I'm not looking back. I'm not going to ask you, what are y'all doing with that money, Pastor? You better trust where you're at. You better trust the heart of the leadership in this church. We're not squandering anything. Nobody's getting rich here. But I'm going to tell you, about, but all of you can get rich in the glories of God and abundance in your money. And abundance in your house. And you won't have enough for you. But you have something for your babies and your grandbabies. You'll have the farm that they'll have to decide what to do with it one day. How many of y'all know I'm telling you the truth? How many of y'all tried it? You tried and see? You want to be abundantly blessed? You lose the principle of first fruits. You just start saying, I don't care. No matter what, you're first. You're first in my time. I'm going to drag my babies to church on Sunday morning if that's what it takes. Well, I just don't want to force my kids. Really? You better teach them something right now or the world's going to teach them stuff you wish they didn't learn. And they're learning who's first in your life because they're watching you. You can't teach them that. You've got to do that. They see you praising God. They see you. You better praise God. No, they need to see you getting crazy with your stuff because they know how crazy you are at home. You better see them how you get through your problems. All I had to do was praise. You better let them see some stuff that this is how you win our battles. This is the way we fight our battles. You do this by putting God first. You praise him. You give to him. You give him your time. You give him your talents. There's people right now that's so talented that, that, that could be right here helping us. But I'm telling you what, you know what they're, I, I, they're out gigging. They're gigging with their talent. I'm like, there's nothing wrong with getting some money in your talent. But I'm going to tell you something. You better put God first with your talent. You better got, and I'm not just talking about musical talent. I'm talking about your ability to mechanic, your part to, to hunt, whatever it is. He's give you ability. Do y'all remember the shape I taught y'all about last year? Shape, S H A P E. Number one, S is spiritual gifts. What gifts does he give you? He's wanting you to be a steward over what he's given you. He's given you gifts, spiritual gifts. H, your heart, your passion. What gets you excited? For years, Gary, was it was hunting, man. He, that was his deal. You know what? But I'm going to tell you something. Whatever your passion is, God wants to use those things. Your heart, A, is your abilities. He wants you to put him first. Give him your tithes of your abilities. Give him that first. Your abilities. And P is your personality. Man, somebody's got different personalities. Y'all know what I'm talking about? Some you like, some you don't like. I don't know. But the truth is, I don't care if you're introverted, it don't matter. You're a good listener. You can do things with your personality that the next person, the person talks a lot like me, may not be able to do. Your person, and the last one is what we experienced yesterday in our house, is your experiences. It's your testimony. It's what makes you you. Take you that he made you and give it back to the kingdom. Don't be all scared to tell anybody your story. You need to tell your story. Use your shape for the kingdom first. Teach your kids to use it first. We're not teaching our, this generation, this church can do this. I don't care what your friends are doing. 
I'm telling you what, I would, I, my parents would have rolled off over in their grave, and so would have I. And my kids said, no, we're going to go play sports on Sunday morning. I'm like, get behind me, Satan. Don't, don't make me get a switch right now. It was what first. And I'm not so hard. I'm not saying that we got to get, uh, you know, legal about this. You know, but I'm talking about the heart. If you want to have, a, to have an inheritance for your children's children, inheritance of how to live a good life and how to keep a job and how to keep a wife or keep a husband. They don't know how to stay married today. And not because you got it all right, but they should learn something about your failure by now. Most of the kids in this church, 90% of our kids' church come from families that are divorced. And Y'all know this is our world today, but how do we help them get to the next generation? How do we teach them how to stay married like you guys have? It's not because you had an conflict and problem. It's because you learned how to seek God first, and all I had to do was praise, and all I had to do was worship, and I remember he's another in the fire with me, and he is my provider and my protector, and the Lord is my shepherd I shall not want, and there's a principle to that. It don't just fall out of the sky. It's me saying I put you first with my money, and you want to trial him with your money. That's the hardest place. But I'm going to tell you the heart. If you had $100 this week and you didn't give the 10, you can get 1000 next week. You won't give the 100 Oh, Lord, if you just bless me, I'll give more. No, you ain't. Give me more and I'll give more. No, you're not. You start where you are. That's all the way you get there. Oh, I'm preaching now. But this ain't getting on anybody. This is powerful. It will change your life. When you learn, you'll have more energy when you put your energy to him. He will rebuke the devourer. I'm, I believe this is all my heart. I believe anything that should be God's, the first in your time, the first in your talents, your, your ability, your energy, that you don't give to him, the devourer takes it. You're not going to end up more relaxed at the end of the day because you slept in on Sunday morning. I don't think you do. I don't think you get more money because I just can't do that. I can't give my tithes away. I don't think you end up with more. I think there's a flat tire that happens. I think there's something else happening. I believe the devourer comes and takes what's not was God's to start with because he said, bring it to me. You put me first and try me and see if I won't open up a heavens to you. My mom and daddy did it. We didn't even teach tithes in our church. We never even understood that principle. It didn't matter. They just did it. Just like Abraham. Nobody told him to do it. It was in their heart to put him first. They wanted to make sure that her church was paid for, the bills were paid. They te- checked it out. My daddy, I mean, it didn't matter. And nobody else was doing it, we did it. You know what came out of that? Out of Jody and Connie, Perry, doing first and getting through the lean years of them, they produced a Pamela. They produced a Jonna. My sisters, I looked up across the field. Oh, my God, it's January 15th. To Sajana, that this week, even with what happened, her child is the anniversary. We had three men in the last week and a half that committed suicide. Three men in our county, our area. My sister was getting, she said, I don't know how to do it, Pam. I don't know how I'm going to do it. I don't know. They got kids, Lindsay's age kids, but they call me. I'm going to have to go out there and going to help that mama. How does she do it? How do you do it? How do you do it? Because you still trust him. And you say, you're first in my life. I will not stop. I will not stop. I'll get up and I'll just, if I bear it, if all I can do is stay still. If I can just do something today, I'm going to put you first in my life. And you get up and you do it again. And you help somebody else because I will give seed to the sower. If you're a sower today, he will give you seed, honey. If you sow your time, you'll get more time. You sow your energy, you'll get more energy. You sow your money, you'll get more money. This is a principle of the kingdom and it works if you work it. Doesn't mean he won't provide for you. He'll always provide for your children if you never gave him a dime. He don't do that. He's not a, for- a father that doesn't pro- provide. He provided for those children of Israel. They had, they, had, they had the water and the rock. He provided. He's always providing for us. But let me tell you something. You want to go over in the milk and honey land, you're going to kill your, you're going to take your Jacob, your Jericho and say, I will not take of that world. I will t- trust you and I will do what you said. I will put you first. And honey, uh, you will go before me and all my enemies will befall. He had already told him, I'm going to give you the land, but it's a process. I'm going to drive them out one at a time, and we're going to talk about that later on. Not today. So don't worry. Are y'all getting something on this? I'm not teaching this the standard way. I, I never have. But I'm going to tell you, I realize today I've not been teaching all this. I feel so bad I've not taught people this. 
I want this recorded. I want to give it to everybody because this is a principle of life that's going to help you, bless you in your time, in your talents, your abilities, and your money. He's going to help you do that. Body, soul, spirit when you put him first. He said, 1 Timothy 6, 17, 19, Charge them that are rich in this world that they be not high-minded. Charge them that are rich in this world that they be not high-minded. How many of y'all people, when they're low, they're humble, and they just need the Lord, but the minute they start getting money, you don't even see them. All of a sudden, I got this, Lord. Oh, I love Jesus, but I don't need to do all that. Uh, whatever you did to get where you are, you better keep doing it. If those meetings helped you get there, if church helped you get there, you better keep doing what you did and do it more. He said, don't trust in uncertain riches, but trust in the living God who gives us richly all things. There's that all again. All things to joy. They that do good, they be rich in good works. Be rich in good works, ready to distribute. You want to give. You know this is what happens when people fall in love with Jesus, they get saved. The first thing they start coming up to me is, how can I serve? What can I do? I was going through some old power of the pasture papers where people say, this is what you'd like to do. They're just checking everything. I'm like, but three years later, they didn't want to do nothing. See, they forgot that, that, that first I fell in love and I, I wanted to trust you and I needed him. I just want to do something. I'm willing, I'm ready to distribute, willing to communicate, laying up in store for themselves. How many of y'all, this is investing right here. Laying up in store. What did I say wealthy people do? They invest. They lay up in store for themselves a good foundation against the time to come that they may hold on eternal. They get a hold on eternal life. And that eternal life is not talking about the afterlife per se. It's on eternal. In other words, the, the things that are not temporal. The spiritual life, that eternal life, that which you cannot see. You get a hold on the spiritual concepts of God. You'll have, lay hold on that life that we're living. We felt well ago when that rush of the Holy Spirit was in this room as we're singing. This is what happens. It's a good foundation against the times to come. You've got something laid for when the hard times come. You already know. You may be like a widow's oil today going, I ain't got it. What do you mean make you something first? He said, can you just trust me? The Lord said, if you'll do it, I'll give you. And that's what happened. After he, she fed him the cake, you know, he said that oil never ran out, that the, the meal never ran out. She had not only enough for her, but anybody came to her house. She had abundance. Brother Hayes told me, he said, look, I can't afford not to tithe. I can't afford not to do that because well, there's no option with me. How could I not do that? That's what got me where I am. And it wasn't, you know, it's not talking about the money. Y'all know it's not just giving tithes. You're going to be blessed. No, it's about the heart. It's about the principle of first fruits. It's putting him first. I'm going to end with this, the parable of the talents, we call it. In the, and Jesus was talking, giving him a parable in Matthew. And he sucked at them and he says, you ought to put, he goes, he gave one ten talents or that's amount, that's amount of money. He gave them ten. He gave another five, another one one. And so he said, um, and he got through and got down the whole story. And he comes and he says, tell me, bring me what you got. The guy that had ten, he'd made ten more. The other that had five, made five more. The one that had one didn't do anything with it, just still had the one. Oh, I kept it. And he said, my goodness, you didn't, you've missed the principle here. He said, I told you that I wanted you to be fruitful and multiply, right? We're talking about Matthew here, um, 25 and, and 27. He says, you should have put my money to the exchangers that at my coming I'd receive my, my own with usury. I'd, I'd have something more. I didn't give you that talent just to, to, to do that, just to help you. I also want you to help others. I didn't give you the talent just to sing. I want you to sing and help others with it. I didn't give you, when I, when I did my first album, Gary said, you've got to give your songs away or the Lord can't bless them. I'm like, I don't want to sing. I'm not trying to be a singer. I'm not trying to record songs and make a singer an artist. But I had to be obedient, and I did. God has used those CDs and blessed so many people. Because I took it, and I, I did. He said, he said, what I gave you, you didn't use it. You just kept that seed. You just ate your seed. But he said, Go take that one talent and go give it to the one with ten. Well, that sounds really weird. Why didn't he give it to the one with five? He said, you know why? Why do you give the money to the one with ten? It's the same reason why you took the seed out of the field that had three seeds. You're going to go and see where there's abundance. We're going to see who's working it. If you ain't doing nothing with it, why would he give you more? 
If you didn't take some of that seed and go plant it for, get abundance for other people to be fed, why would he give you more? So he said, you take the one and give it to the 110. How many of y'all know if you want to get a job done, who do you give it to? Busy people. You give it to somebody that ain't got nothing to do, you know what they're going to do? They're probably not going to do that either. It's a principle. People that are doers, people to get done job. That's who you want to go ask. I know I'm busy, but that's important to me, so I'm going to do that too, Pastor. Who are you? Did somebody give you a job to do? I'm just too busy with my life. Well, how about take the one from him and give it to one with ten. It's a principle of the kingdom. If you're a person that he can bring it through you, he will bring it to you. He will give seed to the sower. Why wouldn't he? If you're willing to go sow and distribute, why wouldn't he give it to you? He'd be a really dumb, stupid God to not give you something to use. You want more this year? You give more. He will give seed to the sower. Oh, but I just got my money. Okay, it's your money. Bless you. God, good for you. He wants you to have that money. Be blessed with that money. But you want more? You want to get out of live, going around a circle of provision? Every day I got manna. He's taking care of me to the point where you're coming across here and you're going to, the first thing they had to be circumcised. Oh, that's whole deal. They laid down their life and they started new this year. Can you start new and say, no, I'm going to lay my Jericho down. I don't care what it is. I'm trusting you first. Try me, he said. Try it. If you've never tried it, try it. I challenge you. That's what the Lord said. He said, not only will I open up a blessing, but I'll rebuke the devourer that takes what you got. He rebukes the time stealers. He rebukes the enemy that comes and tries to steal what God has given you. Because you're just so shy. I just can't use it for I just don't want to be around people. Whatever it is, he's going to rebuke that off of you. You're going to get free. Because he's got something for you to do. I will give seed to those that's ready, ready to distribute. Those that will come and bring in the house and say, whatever we've got, I'll tell you, whatever we can give to Uganda, I want to give more to those orphanages. I want to give more to the food banks. I want to give more. I want to bless the people. I want to bless whoever serves. I don't want to muzzle the ox that tries the corn. He said, me and Gary, we're working. We're doing what we're doing. Don't you want to bless your pastors, don't you? And we don't even take. It's just amazing how you just want to do stuff. Principle works. He wants his ways today to be known to you. His ways, I call it spiritual adulting. You need to grow up spiritual adulting. His ways comes with gratitude, trust, and setting a priority. I'm going to teach my kids to put God first in their life. I'm going to teach myself. I'm going to try God and see what he's going to do with this. Emma Young, does that spark your interest? He said, you purpose in your heart. It's up to you. Nobody's going to tell you. Let me tell you this about me, about for the money business. I see who serves and who doesn't, but I don't see what you give money. I, I determine, I don't see it. I don't know who ties, who don't. I don't, I don't even want to know that. Because it ain't about me, is it? It's about him. He said, he that he give in secret, he blesses you, and he'll bless you in the open. Oh, my goodness. Your enemies will see a table spread. We're not going to teach y'all of Psalms 23 this week, but there's the first line. God is my provider. I shall not want. There's a principle to this, and it works if you work it. He will make known his ways 